let me introduce these fellas to you. This is Jimmy Griffin. He's a founding member of Bread. He uh, hooked up with Rob Royer and David Gates, yeah. and they made some bread. And the rest of it is date night history. And this is Terry Sylvester. He was with the Escorts and a group, oh, I love this group, the Swingin' Blue Jeans. Thank you very much. <laughs> they opened for the Beatles, and he replaced uh, Graham Nash and uh, Hollies. And then this, of course, is John Ford Coley on the end. He met, uh, <laughs> met Dan Seals in high school. And uh, you guys worked, I guess, as uh, a duo, and, and the rest is England Dan John Ford Cully history. As much as I can remember of it, yes. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for being here. Thank you. We've been looking forward to this. This is uh, especially, uh, I don't think it's a gender isolating thing, but the girls have been dying to hear this music. I mean, ready to hear it. <laughs> Good. Oh, before we get underway, I want to recognize Jim Horn. Is he still around? Jim Horn is an amazing player. There he is. This guy's played with, uh, oh gosh, Tina Turner, Eric Clapton, Garth Brooks, all the Beatles. Uh, all the Beatles. Amazing player. Local hero, global hero sax player guy. Thanks, Jim, for being here. Now, where did the, uh, the soft rock cafe idea come from? Okay, who's me? Yeah, I don't me. care anybody talks. <laughs> uh, the, the actual uh, for the for the name itself is my idea, but uh, I've been recording with Jimmy for the last 25 years, and he's been a friend for you know for as long as that. And uh, John came on the scene because John's worked with Jim, and we've just kind of gone from there. And we all soft rock, and we like going to cafes. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. And our manager, uh, Jim Delacroce, kind of put us together. Terry and I, the first time back in uh, last year, we did a thing at Boston, Boston Garden for the Boston Celtics, and that kind of kicked it off. And then uh, we decided to try to do some corporates, and we're going to get in and do some recording. And since uh, John moved to town, he's only been here a couple months, but Five months. but uh, that kind of completed the trio. So. Yeah. Now, does it does it uh, bother you or, or make you think any particular thing that? So many people have made out to your music. <laughs> I've heard I mean, that. everybody. Well, let me let me tell you a story, okay? Because it kind of puts it in perspective. One night I was playing in California, and after the show was over, a lady came up and she said, "You know, Love Is the, uh, Is uh, Nights of Forever Without You right. was my fiance's and my favorite song. We fell in love to the song. We danced to the song. We loved to the song. We did everything." And I stupidly said, "Well, thank you very much." And then she said, and then that so-and-so left me and I've hated your song ever since. <laughs> so, if there's any indication, it's give and take. Go, yeah. It's come and go. There you go. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Now, where did the name Bread come from? Well, I'll tell you, that's, you know, that's always a hard thing to do is to name your group. And we had, Brett had the same problem as, as anybody. The, and we were looking for names. And I remember David coming up with the, the name Dragon Wick. And, and we came Dragon up, Wick? Dragon Wick was one of the <laughs> Oh, yeah. Choices. That's tender. <laughs> so, Rob, you know, one night Rob and I were riding down Sunset Boulevard. And uh, it was about uh, 2 or 3 in the morning. I don't know why we were out that late. But we I can't imagine. A Barbara and Bread Truck. And we'd been looking for two or three months and coming up with names. and, and and, and Rob said, Brad, that sounds like a good name. And so I kind of laughed at it. And when we got into our production meeting, when, after we'd finished our album, uh, Rob threw that name out again in front of Jack Holzman and, uh, and uh, Bill Harvey at Electra. And uh, Bill Harvey said, well, you know, that's what it's all about. Let's go for it. So, so it was a Barbara Ann bread truck. Basically, yeah. Uh, so it could have just as easily been Barbara Ann. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Just this close. Really? And you won an Academy Award. What, what year was it? 71? 1970, it? 71. Yeah. Incredible. Thank you. Where does that live? I always wonder what somebody does when they win an Oscar. Where does well, that... I've got mine on my television at home, and uh, Rob has his in his bathroom for some reason. But, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, but that's Rob. And, uh, but I won that for the uh, Carpenter single, and Red was going to do that, but we had too many ballads on the album at the time, and uh, so uh, we let it go. And Red can't have too many ballads. <laughs> that's, that's why I found Looking out. back, he should have yeah. kept it. No, it did very, very well. Thank you very much. Now, you grew up in uh, Texas. Dallas. What part? Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Where'd you come from, Texas? Uh, about 120 miles west of there, a little town called Deleon, Texas. Okay. Somebody actually tried to applaud. Snap out of it. Come on, you don't know where that is. <laughs> no, it's a great little town. And you met... You met Dan, I guess, in, in high school. We started out playing in a rock and roll band called the Southwest FOB back in uh, yes, high school. About the 19... Southwest what? FOB. 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 F, as in free. One letter words. away. Well, we were young, stupid. We couldn't quite figure out which letters went where. You know, so. 
Where did the England of England Dan come from? We actually started doing this stuff about the time that the Beatles and all the British rock bands were coming in. Right. So Dan used to try to mimic the English accent. Now you understand coming from Texas that a Texan can do a real good Texas accent. Yeah, pretty good. But he was horrible at this English accent. But Jimmy uh, Seals, his, his older brother, right. said what we got to do is come up with something that nobody knows. So he came up with England Dan and then dropped one L from my name and my middle name, changed it from John Edward Colley to uh, John Ford Coley, just John Ford. And I was working rodeo at the Mesquite Rodeo and things like that. Yeah. And, and so he was looking for an East and West kind of flavor and English. Danny and John Portfolio came right up. So I like it. I like it. It works. Every, we started thinking about how we would do this. The next one would be Italian Dan and John Ford Cappuccino. And <laughs> you know, just going down the line. So. Yeah, we had a good time. Also. Oh, yeah, we used to open tour. these guys. All the the swinging Blue Jeans. You've got to tell me where that name like came that? from. Um, well, my first group, the Escorts, was a kind of a school school group. And we so it could have been the Swinging Escorts. It could have been. Unfortunately, it's a group. Uh, <laughs> we used to play the Cavern Club with the Beatles and obviously all that era in the early 60s. And then I left the Escorts, joined the Blue Jeans for three years. The old hippie hippie shake, all that kind of thing. Right. Uh, and then um, when Graham Nash decided to leave for Crosby, Stills and Nash, uh, I got the call. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of music history right here, folks. We're going to have some great music, great conversation. We've got to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay right there.